This week for EMN5, we're going to go through appendicitis, which is a part of this series on CT imaging for the ER physician. And the first thing you have to do for appendicitis is actually find the appendix, which actually can be fairly tricky. My key here is that you need to find the colon first. So let's go through a couple pictures. Here we have the ascending colon. Um, let's identify the descending colon over here on the left. Um, and then we have the transverse colon. So now we've found the colon, and specifically we found the ascending colon and the cecum here. And we're going to be basically be looking between somewhere between the umbilicus and the pelvis, or the cecum, we should find the appendix. So that's where you're going to be scrolling through to try to find it. So in an appendicitis, now that we've found the appendix itself, we should be looking for these findings. So first, a dilated appendix, anything bigger than 6 millimeters. You should also see some appendiceal wall thickening greater than 2 millimeters. You'll probably see some fat stranding around that area. The wall of the appendix should be enhanced, and maybe even the cecum will be a little bit enhanced or thickened. So let's look at some examples. In this patient, um, we've identified the appendix. We've measured it. It's 17 millimeters. What do you think? Is this patient sick or not sick? Good, so this patient is sick. The diameter is greater than six millimeters. In fact, it's 17, it's quite large. What about this one? So we've identified, here's our appendix right here. Good, so this is not sick, this is a normal appendix. We see uh, there's air inside, no fluid, it's not dilated, and there's nice dark fat around it, so there's no fat stranding. This is a normal appendix. What about this one? This is a really good example of a sick one, right? So this is appendicitis, we are dilated. The rim itself is enhanced. You can see it's uh, brighter than the rest of the bowel if you were to look at the rest of the bowel. It's also fluid filled, so that's not a good sign. And then we have a lot of fat stranding around it. So here's some nice dark normal fat right around the appendix. If we see these enhanced strands, that's fat stranding. Fat stranding is key when you're looking at anything on a CAT scan in the abdomen. It'll basically lead you right towards your diagnosis. So if you're scanning through a CAT scan, look for fat stranding. It'll cue you right into what your, what your problem is. So why do we do IV contrast in appendicitis or really anything that we're looking at bowel? Well, that's because it actually lights up the bowel wall. Here, we have the same exact picture except with IV contrast. And you can see that the bowel wall is very lit up. It's a very bright. It's a lot easier to see. And you can also see if the wall itself is enhanced or thickened a lot better um, than on this other scan. Okay, here's another example, definitely appendicitis. So here's our appendix. It's dilated, it's fluid filled. The rim or the wall is enhanced um, and thickened. Okay, how about this last one? Sick or not sick? Definitely sick, right? This is an example of a perforated appendix. It's neat because in this scan you can actually see where the defects in the wall are, so that's the perforation. And then what is all this surrounding it? That's fluid, right? So you have a fluid collection here, a lot of fat stranding. Okay, so let's talk about some other mimickers of appendicitis, basically patients coming in with right lower quadrant pain. So in your differential of right lower quadrant pain, these are some other things you can think about. So let's go through some different imaging here. So we have this finding, our patient has right lower quadrant pain, and we're looking through our scan before we get the read back, and we see what we think is maybe an appendix right here. So this is actually an epiploic appendicitis. It's rather rare, but if you do get a read back on the scan, I want you to go back through your scan um, and try to see if you can find it. This isn't something we're necessarily going to be able to diagnose as emergency physicians, but if your radiologist diagnoses it, you can now go back through and look and try to see what they're thinking. So first of all, what is an epiploic appendage? So this is all these little um, fat appendages that can be anywhere on the colon, and you can imagine that if it's on the right side, if any of these little appendages get twisted, infarcted, it can cause a lot of pain. It can mimic appendicitis. And the good thing is, is that it's pretty much a benign problem that will resolve on its own. You do not need to have this patient go to surgery. The issue is, is that it can look a lot like appendicitis. So you're going to have a hyperattenuated. You'll see this little appendage here. Um, there can be a lot of fat stranding surrounding it. The key is that it's fat containing. So there's fat inside. There's not fluid. There's not pus. Um, it shouldn't be air. So here's another example. Um, you see an enhanced rim. We have fat stranding, but there's fat inside. Here's one more example. You can tell why this is um, an appendicitis mimicker. Fat stranding, enhanced rim wall, but there's fat inside of it. Okay, next up is this scan. So we're looking through it, right lower quadrant pain. Do we have three epis here? So um, it's actually a cluster of enlarged mesenteric lymph nodes, and your radiologist will tell you this is mesenteric adenitis. 
What about this one? We see, I um, remember I said anytime you see fat stranding, it should cue you in. So here we have a lot of fat stranding, but we don't really see anything else. So this is um, basically a large area of faint edema, and maybe your reader will come back as a mental infarct. Now what about this? So that's actually diverticuli. So this is a right-sided diverticuli. You can have right-sided diverticulitis, which can easily mimic um, an appendicitis. Now what about this patient coming in with right lower quadrant pain? Here we actually found the appendix and it looks fairly normal, doesn't it? But here we have a lot of bowel wall thickening um, and the diagnosis here is gonna be a colitis, in this case, Crohn's colitis. Uh, all right, this last patient is a female. She's having some suprapubic and right-sided lower um, quadrant pain. You come back, again, we're queuing in by all this fat stranding and rounding it. Um, we see the circular structure, right? But there's one on both sides. And there's a uterus right here. We're really low in the pelvis here. This is not an appendix, right? This is actually an ovary, um, and this is actually a diagnosis of PID. So, in three to remember, for appendicitis um, imaging on CT scans, we're looking for a diameter greater than six millimeters. We're looking for wall thickening and enhancement. Um, that's why we're getting the IV contrast so that it'll light up really well. And we're also looking for fat stranding. Look for fat stranding anywhere on a CAT scan when you're concerned about some kind of pathology. Here's some references, and thanks for joining us on EM in five.